We're just continuing with the that we started mentioning yesterday. If a person comes late to Mincha and they wanted to do Kiddushah, or for example, they come late to Shachrit and they wanted to do Kiddushah, and this is a Bet Knesset or a Bet Midrash where they're going to have learning. So therefore what it says here is that En la avsik shiur Torah le tzorach amirat Kiddushah, ne shetamu Torah shakul kerenke kol mitzvot, which means that the person cannot come and start causing that they're going to stop the learning or they're going to be late because now he wants to do another Kiddushah, but rather he has to do it by himself. Why? Because at the end of the day, since he's going to cause Bitul Torah of the people that they wanted to start learning and now he wants to do his Kiddushah, his Kiddushah does not take more preference than the learning of the people. But now I just wanted to bring down, what about answering Amen Yishimera Bar or Amen or Barichu or all those things during your learning? So here there's a Machlok at the post scheme to do with answering Amen. The Pitchet Shuvah says that Amen is like a tefillah, and therefore Mishet Turato Manato, which means a person that's mamash learning the entire time, is Patu Milanot. But somebody that's obligated in, uh, in tefillah, he's obligated to say Amen. And therefore the Shul Shalmat Chaim comes and says, You have to answer Amen. We don't have Turato, turato Manato nowadays. The Kava Chaim says that you don't have to answer Amen. And the Shul Maim Rabim comes and he wants to make a differentiation between Tamut Torah de Rabim and Tamut Torah de Yachid. He says, Tamut Torah de Rabim, you shouldn't answer. Because it's Gorem Lebitul Torah Bilbul, right? As he says, Vetirufa Talmidim. He says, when you're in a shiur, if you're going to have to start answering and going back and forth, you're going to stop the shiur. You're going, it's the people, they get confused. They're not able to concentrate. There you shouldn't do it. However, though, if it's going to be just the Yechid, you should. And then he says, Midat Chasidut is that the Talmidim should answer in a low voice. So I wanted to bring you down what it says like this. Here, there's a Sefer Ve'el Namu Mishol. He adds much more to what we just mentioned now. And he brings down the, the, the Levush. That the Levush actually brings down a very incredible story that actually he was put into Cherem, right, by Rabbi Yitzchak Avuhav, the Minunat Maor, because he didn't come and he didn't answer Amen to Brachai, even a child. And this was during his learning. And then afterwards he says, so according to that, you should answer Amen. And that's also brought down in the, the Sever She'elat Rav, the name of Rechaim Kenievsky, that if you're learning in the Bet Knesset and you hear Kaddish from another Minyan, you must answer. That is the Shittah of Rechaim Kenievsky. However, though, here he brings down the Shut Shevet Alivir Rav Vosner, that he says that even though technically you're obligated to answer a man on every Berecha that you listen, nevertheless, if there's going to be a Chashash of Bitul Torah and if Sek, Lechu Alma, you do not have to answer Minadin. And he brings up Raya from the Gemara Mesech Brachot of Nun Gimel to do with that they brought the Or, which is on Motzei Shabbat, they brought the Ner, and were they obligated to come and to start making the Bracha in the Bet Midrash or not? And then he brings the Shut Rivot Ephraim, that he also says that if it's going to cause Hafral Limud, you don't have to answer a man, and that was the, the Psak of Rav Yashiv and Rav Zilber. But then he brings down also in the name of the Shud Kinyana Torah, that a person that's in one, one side room of the Beit Knesset and the Tzibur does not see him, so then he's going to be patur from learning, but if he's not learning, uh, patur, sorry, from answering, but if he's not learning, he's obligated to answer. And then he continues and he says that even if you're going to come and you're going to tell me that it's going to be patur, as we say, Talmud Torah, lo amri na usem mitzvah patur mitzvah. So therefore, technically speaking, we have to understand, so why Bemet should he be patur? So there's another sefer that comes and he wants to say, that when you're coming and you're actually learning, right, he comes and he says, you're not obligated to answer in the middle of your limud, because since your friend could make a bracha, even if you're not going to answer a man, so therefore it's not considered en levatel Torah to come and to start, meaning that your men does not do anything to what they're doing. Meaning, obviously, if you're part of the ten, and they're counting you as part of the ten, so they need you to answer the amen for the Kaddish or whatever it is, so then they're, they're your part of the ten. But if you're not part of the ten, even if you did answer, you didn't answer, it's nothing bothers in the fact that you didn't answer. So therefore he wants to say that maybe you don't have to come and you don't have to answer. But then afterwards he brings down Rechaim in Berlin. And Rechaim in Berlin comes and he says, everything depends on the human being. It depends on every, it's subjective to every single person. He says, if right now through answering the Kaddish or the Kiddushar, you could immediately go back into your learning and nothing happens. Meaning, meaning you come, okay, I'm in here, and then you continue, as if nothing happened. So therefore you're obligated to come, and you should, it's proper to stop and to answer whether there's going to be other men or whatever it is to do it. But he says, but if it's going to be that you come and you stop, and because you stopped, now you can't even, uh, you can't even think, or you can't even do nothing, whatever it is, you're not obligated to stop, and even if you're reading Tehilim, right, you're not obligated to stop. Meaning not only if you're learning, you're reading Tehilim. But if every single two that you're going to stop, eh, you're not going to be with your mind there, you don't have to stop. 
And then he brings down also another one that he comes and he says that even though it's mashpah from Chaim Falacha that you do have to stop, nevertheless, if it's going to bother you, you don't need to. And therefore, it's for a sikum that a person that's, uh, for a summary, a person that's sitting and learning Torah and he hears, whether it's Chazrat Hashat or Kadishim, and if it's going to bother, bother him, he's going to be patur from answering. Again, one more time, there's going to be that there's some shitot that hold you're obligated to, some shitot hold that you're exempt. According, some shitot hold it depends on the Rabim or the Achid. If it's a group learning, you don't need to. If it's going to be individual learning, you do need to. And the last one that we mentioned is, it all depends on the person. If you could answer and it's not going to bother you, you should answer. And if it's going to come and start bothering you, so then a lot of shitot say that you don't need to answer whatsoever. (laughs)